Hello everybody and welcome back to the Matt Vidpro AI YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be running through the latest in AI and showing you guys the developments that I have personally found the most intriguing. Now if you really want to stay the most up to date, my recommendation to you would be to follow me on Twitter or join my Discord server because I'm always reposting the latest stuff and on Discord the viewers, well, let's just say that they are more up to date than I could ever hope to be. First up here guys, we have something from the Zuck. 600 thousand h100s in available compute training llama 3 and they're also open sourcing llama 3 this is literally just a, a little video update recorded on his phone man can this guy ever look like a genuine human being in all seriousness though i think it is phenomenal that they will be open sourcing llama 3 that is huge it's exactly what the ai space needs we need democratized access to quality AI models. All right, let's take a listen to the statement from our favorite lizard in the AI space. Today, I'm bringing Meta's two AI research efforts closer together to support our long-term goals of building general intelligence, open sourcing it responsibly, and making it available and useful to everyone in all of our daily lives. It's become clearer that the next generation of services requires building full general intelligence, building the best AI assistants, AIs for creators, AIs for businesses, and more. That needs advances in every area of AI, from reasoning to planning to coding to memory and other cognitive abilities. This technology is so important, and the opportunities are so great that we should open source and make it as widely available as we responsibly can so that way everyone can benefit. And we're building an absolutely massive amount of infrastructure um, to support this. By the end of this year, we're gonna have around 350,000 NVIDIA H100s, or around 600,000 H100 equivalents of compute if you include other GPUs. We're currently training Llama 3, and we've got an exciting roadmap of, of future models that we're gonna keep training responsibly and safely too. People are also going to need new devices for AI, and this brings together AI and the metaverse. Because over time, you know, I think a lot of us are gonna to talk to AIs frequently throughout the day. And I think a lot of us are gonna do that using glasses because glasses are the ideal form factor for letting an AI see what you see and hear what you hear so it's always available to help out. Ray-Ban Meta Glasses with Meta AI are already off to a very strong start and overall across all this stuff, we are just getting started. Interesting. So I agree and disagree with some of what he said. The most important thing here is they want to build artificial general intelligence or AGI. So Zuck is absolutely in that race competing with OpenAI directly and plans to open source it apparently, which I think is absolutely fantastic. There are some dangers that come with that, obviously, but we can't just let a few very powerful people control something as incredibly powerful as AGI. It has to be democratized. That is definitely the road to the best future for humanity, and I think Zuck does understand that, or at least he says he does. Like, out of all of the big tech company CEOs, he seems to be the most legit about kind of open sourcing the technology. This infrastructure, 600,000 h100s i mean that is an insane amount of compute so they're they're doubling down in the ai space for sure they they understand it's the future then he starts talking about the metaverse yeah the metaverse is a failed experiment sorry zuck and also meta glasses i mean i could see glasses being a, a good place for an ai assistant to kind of live on your face but i don't know if it's like the future the end all be all future and that's not all we have from meta today they also have devised self-rewarding language models and they've done this by fine-tuning llama 270b on three iterations they're essentially training the ai kind of like an animal teaching it that if it gets good results it actually gets some sort of a reward and they stayed on Alpaca Eval 2.0. They actually have a win rate over GPT-4 Turbo. Here are the actual results themselves. You can see it definitely works. By iteration 3, you're at a 20.44% win rate in this specific leaderboard. You're beating out GPT-4 Turbo. You're beating out Gemini Pro. You're beating out Claude 2. But shockingly, you're not beating out Mixtral Medium or the original full GPT-4. Again, this kind of 
shows you that the original GPT-4 is probably the best model that we've ever seen to date, even more so than GPT-4 Turbo, at least in Alpaca Eval. It's pretty crazy though how much they were able to bring it up with this self-rewarding fine-tuning. Iteration 1 is at less than 10%, while Iteration 3 is at over 20. Imagine applying something like this to GPT-4 or Mixtral. Moving on here, we actually have an update from Runway ML and their video generation models. They have a multi-motion brush tool now. This gives you a greater amount of control over the video as a whole, and you can see the results definitely speak for themselves. You can see in their little demo, you just highlight all of these faces, and you can have them move in whatever direction that you please. Purple faces are going to the left, pink faces are going to the right, and it absolutely follows along, at least in this little demo that they have here. I'm not sure how great it is in person. This is something I would consider maybe doing a full video on, so let me know if you want to see that. But of course, you can have very realistic stuff as well, where they're all moving in their own separate direction as they would in real life. I mean, when it comes to AI video, finer creative control really is what's going to win out at the end of the day, and this is definitely a big leap forward for AI video in this specific regard. However, I do have to say it does kind of feel like you're more or less just animating a painting because the rest of the image is still so static. I feel like you need a lot more fine tunability and control. This one actually looks pretty great. AI video has come so far in the past year and a half, honestly. It is leagues beyond what it used to be. However, I gotta say we have a long way to go before we're actually competing with full-length feature films, for example. Definitely can produce some good-looking imagery for sure, but I give it five years maybe before we truly see something that is disruptive of the movie industry. Either way, Runway, this is pretty darn sick, and it just shows that they absolutely know what people want in terms of AI video. It's more creative control over our final outputs. Take those images from our head and bring them to life. Okay, now I've got a real showstopper for you guys. This is absolutely incredible. This is multi on AI. This is apparently an AI agent that can handle actions well over 500 plus steps without losing context of the end goal and cross operate on 10 plus websites as a part of a single task. Again, this is absolutely unprecedented. We've never seen an AI agent that can autonomously act at this level. And this absolutely interests me. AI agents, autonomous AI agents are one of those things that I've been particularly interested in. And they say that their latest update here really cracks these core issues, the goal divergence and looping problems that have long plagued the original AI agents like AutoGPT. They also have a 10 minute demo here of this thing working. If I could get access to this thing, I think it would absolutely make for a phenomenal full length video. So this is definitely something that I've got my eye on. The idea is to simply leave it running every day and have it do tasks for you in the background. More scheduling features soon. Okay, let's take a quick peek at this demo. And this is 10 minutes long, so I might skip around a little bit, but let's see how they start this thing off. So this is the task that is being demoed here. Go to Twitter, search for the latest tweets that I made, remember them, so you can then search for super interesting AI news. Search the news on up to three different sources. If you see the source isn't really that interesting, go to a different one. When you finish the research, go make a few small and interesting tweets with the info that you gathered. Make sure the tweet is small but informative and interesting for AI enthusiasts. Don't do more than five tweets. Incredibly specific. Okay, the bot starts out here. I'm navigating to, to Twitter. Twitter to search for the user's last five tweets as the first step in the plan. I'm clicking on the profile link to view the user's last five tweets as the next step in the plan. And then it goes and memorizes the latest five tweets as it should, and then it just Googles latest AI news. Navigating to Google to search for the latest AI news as the next step in the plan. I'm clicking on the first link to AI news, artificial intelligence news. So it's going ahead and it's researching some of the latest AI news. It's going and reading articles, it's then memorizing those articles, and now it starts to write the tweets. It'd be nice if it could have linked the original article though, but it did indeed write the tweet. How cool is that? It then goes ahead and writes another tweet. Ooh, it noticed that one of the pages was actually missing here and it was able to navigate around that, which is pretty awesome. And that process seems to just repeat endlessly where it goes ahead and finds another one and writes five total tweets about real AI news. That's pretty impressive. It does 
that in about 10 minutes, which really is quite good. Follow the instructions to a T. That is absolutely some of the best autonomous AI agent stuff I've ever seen. Mm, I'm definitely going to try to get access to this thing. Let me know if you'd want to see a video on this. We would try a lot more than just writing tweets. This one also caught my eye. This is some more developments into AI large language models. Microsoft has released a new method to actually speed up LLM inference, essentially speed up the large language models outputs. This also makes running the large language model a lot cheaper because you're essentially removing unneeded tokens. It uses a compact, well-trained large language model, a very small one, GPT-2 or Llama 7B, essentially to go out identify and remove non-essential tokens from prompts. That's all that's going on. The best way I think to think about this is that essentially these little large language models are trained to speak the language of the large language model, if that makes any sense. It will take your prompt and compress it down into less tokens than it was previously, which saves money overall and can actually boost performance in some cases. The best part about this whole thing is that you can implement it into any app you're developing that utilizes large language models. It's completely open source, completely free to use. Also really easy to implement just using their library. Love to see stuff like this. Reducing the cost of AI means more accessible AI. Now take a look at this one, guys. AI-generated videos don't have sound typically. Like if we go back to that motion brush demo, you can see none of these videos have any sound, but this is actually a new AI model that can generate sound effects based on visual input. So this is like a sound generator to go along with AI video generators. Really interesting. Interesting. It's a vision language model that identifies events within videos and then generates sound to match that specific video content. Obviously, this little clip down here, this little demo, is not going to be an AI-generated video, but you could absolutely use this with an AI-generated video. This is just to show how good it is with a movie scene. I gotta say, guys, this is pretty darn impressive. Take a look. All of that was AI generated. The door was pretty insane to me. Like you can see, it really seems like he's opening the door. Door swings open. Footsteps sound perfect for that specific type of shoe and that floor type. So this one's got a project page. There's a few more demos we can check out. And it seems like they plan on releasing the code on GitHub, which uh, seems to just be coming soon. So it's not really released yet, but we do have some demos to peek at. Now, in this specific test here, what they're trying to achieve is, can we have the AI model not only replicate the sound, but can we prompt it to make a new kind of sound that still syncs up with the original audio. So the condition here is a stick scratching the dirt. So even though the original clip, which is this, doesn't sound like a stick scratching the dirt, they want their model to match this video while also make it sound like a stick is scratching the dirt. This is the quote-unquote competitor Foley Gen, which is just like a text-to-audio generator. This is what it produced. Doesn't really sound like a stick scratching the dirt. Now this is theirs. Not bad at all. Absolutely syncs up with the original video and it sounds like a stick scratching the dirt. Here's what a real stick scratching the dirt sounds like. More or less, I guess. So now you understand how they work, let's run through all these examples. Not bad. The audio syncing is really impressive with this. I honestly think that the best one of this bunch is actually the AI generated one. Not bad, man. None of these really matched the original leaf sound too well, but I feel like leaf can be pretty subjective here, so I'll cut it some slack. The paper bag? Wow, that one sounds pretty good. The dirt sound, it sounds like you're actually digging into the dirt. Not bad. It's 
See, that one just doesn't match at all. That absolutely sounds like you're whacking metal. Really awesome. It can sync any video with any prompt. Okay, final one. Yeah. Okay, that thing really kicks some butt. I love it. I absolutely love it. We've also got some replication from actual movie scenes, which is pretty cool. This is the original clip. And here you can see they combined two different generations with different prompts. First, blowing a whistle. Not bad. Syncs up pretty well. And also the waves. Combining the two together, obviously. It syncs up so well. That's that's kind of the mind-blowing part. So they also have a few other uh, tests that you can take a look at as well. Obviously, everything is always going to be linked down below for you guys. I'm sure a lot of you remember at CES, the Rabbit R1 AI device was announced, and it's like this whole extra device that you carry around, and it specifically just completes automated AI tasks for you. A lot of people were asking, why isn't this an app? And that's a whole separate discussion in itself, but it looks like people are already making their own rabbit apps that just work on your phone. So you can see Alvaro Sintas here is showing it taking uh, personal calls. Call Tom and confirm our reservation. Sure. Give me one moment while I call him. Hello, this is Tom. Hey Tom, it's Will's assistant. Just calling to check if you're still available for the 6 p.m. reservation. Yes, I'm available. Uh, great, thanks for confirming. I'll let Will know. Have a good day. Thanks. Pretty insane. I mean, it does kind of make you think like, dang, do we really need to be carrying a whole extra device around? I do think that AI agents on your phone are coming very soon. Apple is no slouch in this. Google, Samsung, the rest of them, they all know that this is something that people want and is absolutely possible with this new AI technology. So I think that they are going to be such a huge competitor in this space that no one's going to want to carry an extra device around like a Rabbit R1, no matter how cool the Rabbit R1 might be. So so yeah guys, that is everything that I've personally found very interesting in the AI space. Still lots of really cool stuff going on, but it isn't the giant AI boom that we always want to see happen, right? 2024 is definitely going to be a massive year for AI. I think we're going to see some huge advancements in AI music, AI video, and I think obviously we're going to see GPT-5 released this year, which should be the biggest AI LLM release we've ever seen. And obviously open source AI is going to be getting getting stronger and stronger as time continues. So stay tuned for more on the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.